property taxes and protesting. Um, so I do have a uh, disclaimer and you should have seen it when, um, when you first logged on. So I'm not sure if you can uh, see it on your screen now, but um, I, I am a licensed realtor uh, for 23 years and I can give um, advice regarding uh, comparables and the housing market uh, related to buying and selling homes. Um, but legally realtors have to guard against giving advice um, that is beyond the scope of our expertise. Therefore, we'll be sharing um, and guiding you by showing our research into different um, important pages online um, and then professionals that we spoke to um, and then my personal experience on protesting because I put out a lot of notices on um, next door every year to offer comps to everyone and I've made uh, several cheat sheets on um, you know how to protest and um, on I'm going to go to the property tax page um, so you can just see there um, just different information about property taxes and um, so this is my page you can go there anytime um, and we're about to play this video, but I just wanted to quickly scroll through just so you can see some other information that you can uh, click on you know, the tax rates and all that fun stuff. Um, now the um, protest page um, is the same thing teamdeffy.com forward slash protest. Um, and there I have a lot more information and um, step by step on how to um, protest your taxes. Um, a lot more information on what to bring, um, and then our cheat sheet that also has different uh, third-party vendors that um, that you can hire to uh, to protest your taxes, and and they range, you know, in price from taking a percentage of how much they save you um, to just a flat fee. I mean, usually it's 100, 150 um, at least. So um, you can go online anytime and um, and download that. I think, yeah, I'm starting way too many things. So my computer is telling me to close some stuff. So I'm going to X out of this page. I hope that you're seeing more than the join a meeting. So we are going to first talk about what property taxes are. This is um, on my YouTube page. So it's uh, youtube.com um, forward slash Team Duffy. And if you just go to property taxes and protest information, I have some stuff from me, um, other stuff from um, the city and uh, title companies and different um, things that I do to, to walk through, um, you know, about actually filing your protest and city council um, meetings because we're going to talk about that in a minute which is the tax rate you know there's um, several different ways to um, get your property tax bill lowered um, other than just protesting and one of them is making sure that the tax rate is reduced so this year um, especially uh, we need to all be you know sending emails and phone calls to all the different entities that um, have a decision in that um, so that they will lower our tax rate um, enough. Otherwise, they're going to have a huge surplus of money. Um, and there are certain things in place that, you know, keep some of them from going up too high. Um, but this year, it's it's going to um, it, it's going to be a lot higher. And the values that you're seeing on your um, on your little sheet that you got in the mail, um, and I'll show you a sample in a minute, but so when you get this, if you have your homestead exemption, um, then it's automatically going to take it down to not more than a 10% increase. Um, but still, if you figure everyone is having an increase because the prices um, of homes are so expensive now and have been for the last year that um, your values have gone up that high um, and probably higher than what they say your tax value is. So that's good if you're thinking about selling. Um, if you're not thinking about selling, then it just means that you're going to be paying more um, in property taxes. So let's see why um, we even pay property taxes. Property taxes. Property 
Texas or Oh, I guess I'll see. Select each year based on the assessed value. We'll start that out. Know about real estate property taxes. The property taxes are an annual tax that the local municipalities collect each year based on the assessed value of your property. These funds help pay for services that benefit the community, like schools, roads, maintenance, things like that. First time homeowners um, often forget to factor property taxes into the overall cost of their new home, which can come as a nasty shock in tax season. My clients are prepared. So let this be a reminder to all homeowners to calculate property taxes into your annual budget. And bonus tip, if you own a rental property, your property taxes may be tax deductible. So if you have any questions um, about the potential costs and benefits of investing in real estate, then give me a call, 214-682-5009. And happy house honey. Have a great day. Wow, that was so blurry, but... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and um, so the, the next one is through um, through Ask Plano and it they have a lot of different things on their YouTube channel. So like I said, if you go to mine and you're going through that uh, playlist, um, then you can just um, go down and, and click on City of Plano if you live in the City of Plano. Um, and then you can see all of their videos that they have. They have a lot of uh, very, you know, um, helpful information. So I would suggest going on there and, and taking um, taking a quick look if you don't understand um, something. So let's play that. I think I'm actually going to skip ahead because they have a lot of really loud um, intro stuff. <laughs> okay, book. And let's completely start the next one. Sorry. One second. Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to Ask Plano. Here's our first question. Hey Joe, I've been paying property taxes for years, but I still don't understand how it's calculated. Can you clear it up? Great question. Property taxes should be easy to understand, but it's quite complicated. So let's start with the basics. You only receive one tax bill, but you're paying taxes for four different entities. The city of Plano, your local ISD, the county, and Collin College. Each of the four have their own tax rates. The county central appraisal district determines the value of your house based on what people are willing to pay for it. Follow this example. The city's current tax rate is 0.4786 cents per $100 of taxable property value. If you own a home valued at $300,000, you would pay $1,149 in city taxes. That's about $3.15 a day. You can use the same math to figure out your county, school, and college taxes. Now, not everyone has the same tax bill calculation. There are homestead exemptions and freezes. Did you know senior citizens can file for an exemption to freeze their taxes and can file for an additional exemption? In our next Ask Plano, we'll talk about those exemptions and freezes. If you have a question, send it to me at askplano at plano.gov or on any of the city's social media channels. I don't know the answer. I'll find it for you. Oh, I'm just going to pause on that so you can see it. Okay, there we go. Okay. So if you live in Plano, you can go there. But uh, for everybody else, and even if you live in Plano, you can um, go to this site. I'm not seeing it. It's uh, knowyourtaxes.org. And um, I'll play this really quick. Um, I think it goes. Texas homeowners pay thousands of dollars in property taxes every year. These bills are determined by two numbers your property's taxable value and your tax rates. Every year, your county's appraisal district sets your property value and sends you a notice of their decision. Property owners may protest this appraisal. And your local governments, like your city and county, will use the total amount of the properties in your area to adopt their budgets and set your tax rates. Later in the year, tax bills are mailed, and you write a check. But you can get an idea of how much that check might be for by getting engaged when your local governments set their tax rates. The amount on that check is calculated by multiplying your property's taxable value for each taxing entity where your property is located like the school district, the city, and the county, by the tax rate they set. The tax rate is a certain amount of dollars and cents you'll pay for every $100 of your home's taxable value. For example, if you own a house assessed at $200,000 that has no exemptions, 
and your total tax rate is 2.5 cents for every $100, you come out with a $5,000 tax bill. Texas has no state property tax, so your total tax rates are determined entirely by local elected officials. You deserve to know how these proposed rates will directly affect your tax bill. And in today's digital age, providing feedback to your local governments on such matters is now easier, more convenient, and more transparent than ever before. For more information on upcoming decisions that may affect your tax bill, visit knowyourtaxes.org. Okay, so you can tell from that, you know, you're listening to and you're like, oh, okay, so it's going to be really easy for me to find out how, you know, I, I you know, put my opinion towards the uh, tax rate because, you know, obviously we do want, um, you know, the taxes to go, you know, to our cities and school and pay for the things that it, it needs, but the surplus should come back to us, not to those entities. And for example, Collin County alone has 62 different entities. So, um, to find out which one your particular house is, you have to go online um, and then look at your actual um, tax bill. And I'll show you that in, in a minute. But um, it, just to show you how difficult it was, you know, when you go through the a lot of these links just kind of go back to the other one and they don't give you the information that you're looking for. Um, so I actually um, spoke to uh, one of the board members that, that does the website for that. Um, and we kind of walk through everything. So they're going to be making some suggestions on how to make this a little bit easier because um, if you, it says, oh, go to know your taxes. Well, I'm already on that. So where is it? It's not there. <laughs> so um, you can go through and learn the basics, but so say you go and say, okay, find your local information. So you go through here and you know select your county. So we're going to select um, Collin County. My system resources are low. Okay, I hope I don't completely drop out. But um, so select your county, and then it brings you um, to this screen that has um, you know the different forms, which is uh, very helpful. The only problem is a lot of times when you start clicking on this, sometimes it will replace this window. Um, so you get, um, well, I'm just gonna flip through and show you the different ones, you know, because I wanted to see, okay, the truth and um, taxation and, um, and all that. So it takes you, so this is the, um, the online form. So when I'm back to that page, um, this is the online protest um, form. Let's see, there we go. So this you can fill out and then you can um, print it or save it. And it is the same as what you got in the mail. And the most important thing, oh, I was gonna um, save this for later, but the most important thing when you're filling this out is this um, section, you want to make sure that you um, are choosing um, both one and two. So one is the um, market, the incorrect, you're saying that it's incorrect appraised market value. And you're saying that the equity, that the value is unequal compared with other properties. So if you're not in Collin County, yours might say something a little bit different. So um, just look for these words, especially the unequal and compared and the market and appraised value. So you want to click both of them so that you can um, talk about what the you know, properties are selling for, but also you can compare your house to your neighbor's house. So we would you know, click that one. And it used to be that when you got your bill, you could just go down um, to the tax assessor's office and uh, meet with the appraiser that gave you the value and uh, talk about it. And, you know, it, informally, they, you know, would lower it. You can't do that now since COVID. So um, you have to actually do the form and send it in. Uh, Collin County has it where you can uh, do everything online and most counties do have that but you have to check with your specific one by again going you know to that know your taxes and putting in your county so once you're there um, and and this is you know for the the Collin County uh, CAD so ColinCAD.org but it, it did lead us there through 
through the know your taxes. So this is the property search. So if I were to click um, property lookup, then this is where I end up on the main page of Collin County. So stuff. Um, so when you go down here, um, you go to property search and then you'll just enter your um, address and then it will, um, let's see if I have this in order. Yeah, so it pulls up and you can, so this is where you can see the, one second. Okay, so the entities. So this is where you can go into the different um, entities, it says. So when you click on it, it goes to this screen. So it's not leading directly to where you think it is, where you're going to see like the, um, you know, how to protest against the tax rate. Um, so it takes you here and you can, you know, read about uh, paying online and your property taxes and all that. Um, and it also gives you, you know, just some basic information on where to go, um, but don't go in because everything's done online. Um, my point kind of is that it doesn't lead you where it's supposed to. So, let's see. Yeah, I hit another one and it led to the same thing that we were looking at before. So it's kind of, uh, you know, takes you all over the place, but um, here, is the taxing entity governing body. And I'm just, it, it took me so many steps to get to it that I just went ahead and put a link on my website on that protest page. Um, but this is how we get the tax rates um, lowered. You can go through and look at the tax rate history and, and all that good stuff. But um, let's see where it is. It's the governing bodies. Okay, so this is what's on my website. So these are the people for your specific school or county and just scroll through it. There's a whole bunch of them that you should call and email and say, you know, no, we do not agree, you know, with, you know, the, the property taxes and the values that have been going up. We want the tax rate lowered. Um, therefore, that would lower how much we owe. So that is on my website. But we will go back. I did want to show this is also on my website it's um, the different exemptions and what your uh, tax rate is right now so you can go and look up uh, what the different rates are so this is the entity so it's for um, school for the city and then it tells you the exemption so this is your homestead exemption right now it's at set at twenty five thousand, but they are um, thinking about increasing that to um, to 40. And I was going to show you a picture of it, but it, um, it does not. I don't know if this is. No, it's not. But OK, so you can click on that to, to see it. But the main point is everybody needs to be going in and voting. They're doing early voting now, but you can go, um, you know, it's uh, I'll post it on my website. I think it's like another uh, month or so that you can go in and vote for Proposition 1 and 2. Um, and Proposition 1 is stating that um, that they are going to increase um, our homestead exemption from 25 to 40,000. So we definitely want that and we want to go and vote and say yes on that. Um, and then the Proposition 2 is for the, um, for the reduction in our school district um, property tax bill. So we want to say yes to that as well. Um, but this is where you can see what it is currently. So currently, you know, we're at 25,000. Um, over 65, you, um, you get certain freezes. You don't get to stop paying, but, um, but it will freeze at that certain um, value. So really important if you're turning 65 and it's about to freeze, make sure that that value is as low as possible. If you need to um, protest, then you definitely want to do it on, on that year. And I have, there is a um, website too that has the, um, let's see, yeah. I 
don't know if you're seeing the PowerPoint or not. Okay, yes, I think you are now. So the different um, exemptions, and I'm about to show you this um, website here, but it's um, through the city, city of Plano. Let me blow it up and you can um, see it better. So this goes through and talks about what, what does it even mean, you know, that I'm getting a homestead exemption. Well, the homestead exemption says that you are um, living in the house and that's your primary residence. So you want to, um, as of this year, you can actually file for your homestead exemption, which is free um, any anytime during the year after you know you purchase the house. Um, it used to be that you had to live there on, you know, or after January 1st, um, which, uh, you know, was kind of a pain because you didn't get to enjoy that homestead exemption very important to have that on your house because that's what um, limits them from increasing your property um, taxing your property value so high so say i'm not even gonna look at this one because i you can read that but i'll explain it my way and then you can read that as well but um so if your homestead um so say they value your house at you know five hundred thousand, and it was uh three hundred thousand then you would have a $200,000 increase, you know, that you're going to have to pay property taxes on. But if you have your homestead, then that means that they can't increase it, you know, more than 10% above that 300,000. Now your value is still going to show the same on there. And every year they are going to increase it 10% um, trying to reach that value. So it, it um, still, you need to, you know, you should be protesting every year to bring that number down. Um, right now, at this moment, will we be able to bring it down, you know, to, to the point where it's going to actually lower it on there? I, it depends on your neighborhood. It depends on how many sales you've had and um, things like that, because our inventory has been so extremely low. Um, but some neighborhoods, you know, have been, um, you know, putting houses more um, on the market and, um, you know, and starting to kind of level out, whereas others are still uh, very rare that houses come on the market. And so those are going for ridiculous amounts over, you know, 100,000 over list price and, um, and things like that. So um, if you want to look at any of the statistics, I, I do have live rolling stats that, you know, it just automatically updates through um, from our MLS system. Um, and that's on my website, uh, teamdeffy.com forward slash stats. And that's also on that protest page. So if you pull up the protest page, you'll be able to see all these um, all these images and then links to the other pages. So it talks in here about the um, for uh, seniors, you know, kind of how you do when you do it um, and what all that means. And this is for the city of Plano, but most of them do have, um, you know, pretty similar um, pretty similar guidelines, but you do need to look for your, for your city. Um, and this talks about who does what, I think I blew it up way too much. Let me minimize it just a bit. I think you can see it now. And this just goes in again to talk about um, the tax rate, you know, why I keep talking about the tax rate and why it's so important, because um, it's not just the value of your property, it's multiplied by the tax rate, you know, that they're setting. So that's why we need to be, um, you know, emailing our uh, councilmen and um, representatives on the school boards and all that uh, to make sure that those are lowered. They do have um, a few years ago, the real estate um, tree pack uh, kind of um, steerheaded a, a proposition to be able to limit that increase of that tax rate years ago and and we did get it passed and it's great for homeowners because um, a lot of the bigger entities like your um, city county can't increase um, you know their budget more than three and a half percent um, you know so they can't say oh well we know that property tax values went up and we're gonna there's a lot more money being put into the pot and so now our budget's you know not two million but it's uh, 15 million no, they can't do that. So they're limited by that three and a half percent. So that does help. But um, 
at this point this year we need the tax rate lowered and and they can do that and they will do that at, at meetings um, some of them will automatically do it um, trying to find the dates for those meetings are um, almost impossible that's why it's important to look um, so here going over the the dates of when things are done um, after we've all gone in and said, no, we want to protest, we don't want to pay um, that amount. Um, and they've done all their figures, they've done the um, arbitration hearings and, and everything's done. Then it goes over here to, you know, the different entities to decide on the tax rates based on how much money they're getting after we've already done our protest. Um, so this is a point that we need to be doing something too. You know, we need to be, you know, emailing and send that saying, no, we want it lowered, lower the tax rate. Um, so anyway, and then after that is when the bills are, are sent out and we're all in major shock. So that's the timeline. And let's get into the protesting. And I'm going to play a little bit from um, Jennifer Parker did. Um, She's on the board of Collin County Association of Realtors um, and a, uh, I think she's now on the Texas Real Estate um, Public Policies Board um, and she's a licensed tax consultant. So I think that um, her explaining uh, some of these next things is probably um, better since we're going against that uh, disclosure that I gave y'all earlier. Um, so let's play part. They have that 40% got a reduction, but they, okay, let's see. Council district shared this, this uh, slide with us last year. The Collin County Appraisal District, um, their numbers show that in 2014, there were only 35,000 value protests, which has steadily climbed each year to over 81,000 protests in 2020. Now I know 81,000 protests for one appraisal district is a huge number, but as you can see, 40% informally settled their protest. That doesn't mean that they, that 40% got a reduction, but they, they somehow through a combination of reductions and agreements um, to not change the value 40% of the protests were settled informally. 25% of the protests moved to the formal appraisal review board hearing. So one thing I want you to be familiar with is the form to follow protest. So that if your client calls you and they say, I got this in the mail, what do I do? Typically first time home buyers, um, I get a lot of calls from them. Um, but People that have owned homes for years and years and have never worried about the value, they also call. But this is a, a sample form. It comes in the same envelope that the appraisal district sends your notification value. This form is step one in the appraisal value protest process. That's the top half of the half of the form. I zoomed in on step three I already went over of the step. protest form. I want you to pay particular attention to section three. That's a lot of times where I get most of the questions because people don't know what box to check. I generally recommend check box one, which is incorrect appraised market value and box two. Value is unequal compared with other properties within the appraisal district. Um, I also call this equal and uniform. We'll be able, we're gonna discuss this, these two reason ways to value the property on the next slide. So market versus equity. For the purpose of gathering information to protest, the market value will be based on market sales. The property owner could bring a CMA from their realtor. The CMA must be an adjusted CMA, adjusted for differences between the properties that are, are the sold properties. There isn't necessarily a... I'm going to stop that right there just to show. So when you go on my website to um, ask for 
the um, cheat sheet and for the comps. Um, I guess I should have brought one of these up. Uh, let me see if I can open one up. But um, sometimes I will just send the entire um, subdivision over. And so when you're looking at it, you just need to look at ones that are um, similar to yours, mainly in square feet, because it's already going to be in the same subdivision. Um, so, you know, number of bedrooms and similar, um, you know, square feet is kind of where you're wanting um, to, to look at. And I'm going to open up how they are sent over so you can just kind of see how you would want to pick one of them. Sorry, I should have had that. I should have had that already ready. But um, tax people. Okay. So on my website too, I have um, when you go on and do the um, protest cheat sheet, um, I have links to um, sub subdivision comps for several ones that are around here. Uh, Twin Creeks, um, Custer Hill, um, three or four other ones that that I usually get a lot of people that ask for comps. Um, so I have those on there. And so you look at it, and so especially Twin Creeks, it's very overwhelming because there's a lot of, you know, information, but I have it sorted by the square feet. So, um, so you just need to scroll down to, to find your uh, square feet. And then you can look at the different, you know, comps. And like I said, most likely you're going to look at it and go, oh, okay, well, they valued it way less than what I could actually get for it right now, um, which is, again, great if you're wanting to sell, um, not if you're paying the property taxes. That's why the tax rate comes in. Now, if you have anything that's wrong with your property, um, you know, then that is checking that one and two box will also um, allow you to uh, take pictures and send in um, pictures. And if you have estimates on it, even better um, of anything that's wrong with your property compared to the other ones that it's sold. So um, any foundation cracks, um, things like that, things missing, broke. It, it's kind of a, an odd thing for, for realtors to, you know, say, go find everything that's wrong with your property and take a picture of it. So, um, but things like that will, will definitely help you um, will help you with getting with getting it lowered. So most likely what they will do is an informal hearing. So once you send in, you go to the um, e-file, like I said, Collin County. I have this on my website too, but it's, you know, that spot right there on the sheet that they mailed you. Um, and it has your, um, your owner ID and your pen. So it has all the information that that you need to just file it online. I would say go ahead and still just fill this out so you'll know what they're going to ask you. Um, but then when when you go, um, you'll just file it online and then you'll tell them, do you want um, an in-person or are you fine with you know them calling you or emailing you? And I would do that. Um, I, I hate to say this and I hope that it's not true, but from what I'm hearing, because so many people are protesting that they are uh, rejecting things just um, just right off the bat. Like, I don't even know what they're even looking at. And if you go to the Collin County um, website, uh, I'm not that's funny, but I guess I thought it was a little bit funny. But anyway, they talk about alert, you know, that, um, you know, they're short staffed and that they're going to be closing during this time. And so when I saw this with um, people saying that, you know, their protests that they put in, that their value was rejected for things that I know are, um, would be accepted. It makes me think that maybe that that's what they're doing. I don't know for sure, but, um, you know, I would say still, if it's rejected, then you just, you come back and you say, no, that, you know, you want to speak to somebody, you want to, um, go to the next, you know, to the next step. Um, you know, the, the example I had that this person had actually closed on their house and they had um, uh, an appraisal and their closing disclosure, and it was for uh, $60,000 less than what the um, property had appraised for, you know, under the, the taxing thing, and it was rejected. So in that circumstance, there's no way that that would be rejected because it's, 
black and white, you know, that, that that's how much they paid for it. That's obviously the market value. <laughs> so, um, but don't be discouraged. You know, if it, if it is, you know, a few years back, you know, I would, um, I would just do the online protest um, and they would almost always um, just send me a, like a little nugget of, you know, they'll the lower it 20,000 or, you know, whatever um, for me just to accept it and, and uh, go away. And I'm hoping they're going to do that again this year because then it's say, you know, if you don't want to have to do all this preparation because who has time for all that, you know, then you just accept their little nugget um, or you hire somebody um, and pay a little bit of money, you know, to, to have somebody else go um, go in there and um, and fight for you. So um, I was going to show you the. That my, um, I thought my presentation was up, but it's not. Okay, no, that's not it. Um, there we go. That slide that I don't know if you could really see it uh, that Jennifer was talking about, but um, you know this is what they had provided. for the previous, where did it go? <laughs> okay, that's great. Hold on, okay, there it is. Okay, so th they had given this, you know, to her, although it was for, you know, um, it's not for this year or even last year, but it just kind of showed, you know, out of people that, um, you know, that protests what happened. So you can see 40%, so almost half of everybody um, got a settlement of some sort. I mean, they, um, I don't know if they settled for what they wanted, you know, but they settled, you know, regardless. And then um, they only had, so out of everybody that, that protested and they had said, you know, how much, how many people had protested had gone up so significantly through the years, which is good. Um, I think everybody should be protesting. So um, you can see how much it, it increased over the years, the number of people, um, you know, that, that did protesting. But uh, so really only 25% of those people actually went in to a hearing, um, you know, and, and had to present, you know, their information. And all it is when you go in there is um, there's, you know, three or four different um, people behind computers usually, um, you know, and you just present the information, you know, that you have. And um, if you have pictures and stuff like that and comps, then you present that to them and, um, and then they show um, you know, their value, how their appraiser got their value, which sometimes is a little, you know, convoluted because, you know, they're, uh, one of their ways of, of giving value is the appraisers um, comparing your house to your neighbor's um, tax value, which they set the value. So it kind of didn't make much sense, you know, to me. So that's why you definitely want to say, you know, also based on market value, not just on, their opinion, you know, of, of everything. And then if you have repairs again, that's, um, that's a big way to do it. So, um, I was probably that year in this little section here, I, I probably just didn't show up. <laughs> I probably, you know, went all the way thinking that they were gonna, uh, cause a lot of times, you know, these settlements would happen like the last the day before, you know, they would come in with a settlement. So, you know, and then if they didn't, I just, you know, wouldn't go in. So this year, obviously, it's a little bit different. I mean, it will probably go back to that after another year or two. But you know, the, the increases that we're having in value is definitely um, uh, here to stay for a while. It has been for a couple of years now. And, um, you know, it's most likely going to be that way until our inventory starts, um, you know, going up more. Um, you know, the interest rates are going up, but, you know, all that's doing is, um, you know, changing how much a buyer can, uh, can afford. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not going to be a buyer for the increased price of your house. So um, if anyone's interested, when, when you ask me for comps, if, if you want to know, you know, actually what your property would sell for, um, which is completely different from, you know, giving the comps for, you know, protesting your taxes, because, you know, you want the lowest amount on that. Um, but if you want more accurate, um, again, go to my website and um, or just let me know when you're asking for the cheat sheet that you would also like to to know how much it would be um, if you're going to sell, you know, the property. So, um, okay, I'm going to go back now to um, 
to her explanation. Let me uh, that. Let's see. No, that's my website. Close that out. Okay. I have too many windows open. Too many. Okay. Well, actually, I will go ahead and show this too because I'm going to link to this on my website. Um, the city of Dallas had uh, they had put out, um, you know, some information on the the property values. I guess that they were getting a lot of calls, so they were, you know, trying to make sure everybody knew that, you know, it's not them. Don't keep calling them. Yeah. So they they go through and explain what in the tax bill that um, that they get, what portion, which is 30 percent is what they're saying. And they're saying that, again, this those taxing entities, it's all the rest of them. It's not us. Well, it's partly them, too. But um, that's why it's so important to um, to email and call that list that I showed you that I'm going to have on my on my website. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll have this, too, for the um for our Dallas, Dallas County people. Um, let's go back to, uh, this was the city of Plano. Oh, I think with two windows open, I would uh, be able to find it. Okay. Where is she? She was just talking. I guess I shouldn't have interrupted. Oh, there she is. Okay. An exact requirement for how the adjustments have to be mailed, made to the sales. I typically will adjust. Okay, I'm going to fast forward that because she's I basically do is I create a spreadsheet throwing the numbers off. So it, it helps them understand if they look at it. Um, she said a couple of things that were not very. This is something to have no graph. And you can see that market value and appraised value can be substantially different. This Texas Comptroller's report shows the appraisal districts reported that the 2018 market value of taxable property in school districts statewide is $3.3 trillion. And the taxable value was over 2.6 trillion, a difference of $630 million. So the market value was 3.3 trillion, but the taxable value was only 2.6 trillion. That just kind of lets you see the difference between the market value and the taxable value. That was for 2018. In 2019, on this graph, you can see that the appraisal district statewide value was uh, 3.5 trillion, in 2018 and in 2019, it was $2.9 over a $660 million difference. Since we're talking about total market value versus appraised, appraised value, I wanted to show you a portion. This is a clip from the value notice that your clients receive, or if you live in Collin County, you would receive. Every appraisal district has one. They tend to look a little bit different depending on the system that they used. But on this example of evaluation notice, you can see that the 2021 proposed market value, I guess the arrows are perfect. I, that a proposed market value for 2021 was 272,267. But the appraised value was just, just a little bit under there in bold is only 248,970. We know that this person has a homestead exemption because down in the bottom row there, you can see an HS. That means that they have a homestead exemption. The appraisal district has acknowledged that. Sometimes homeowners aren't sure if their appraisal, their homestead exemption got accepted and all. They can see that on their, on their value notice. The value can only be raised 10% per year plus any improvements 
on this particular property because it has an upstead. Since the value was being raised from 226000 to 272000 the homestead cap kicked in and the taxable value is capped at 240970 The market value is the price the property would sell for in the current market between a knowledgeable buyer and seller. The appraised taxable value accounts for any special appraisal district provisions, value limitations, agreements, homestead of cap over 65, and, and applicable exemptions. Again, there can be an, a substantial difference between these two values. Not in all cases, but. Okay, things to bring to your property tax hearing. And these are things that you can share with your client. Um, this slide, That's on my website. this information actually was provided to us by the Collin County Appraisal District. So these are items that they recommend. The appraisal districts are tasked with appraising all properties at their fair market value. You may have heard property taxes referred to as ad valorem taxes. Ad valorem is Latin for according to value. So basically, the appraisal district's job is to place a value on each property within their jurisdiction according to the fair market value of that property as of January 1st of each year. You remember that very first slide that I talked about, the value is of January 1st. The state comptroller does a ratio study to ensure that the appraisal district's appraised values are within 90 to 110% of market value by comparing the appraised value, the values that they put on the uh, properties to market sales. It's the, um, it's basically an audit. It's okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull over because I don't know what she's not showing it. It's um, not too high or too low on their valuations. If the values are out of range, then the appraisal district will be, be required to reappraise a certain sector, whatever is we'll out still of listen range. to her, but and, um, here you can see. And the following year, they'll have to do a report to the state comptroller to show that they are within the ratio study. Okay, so these are the I'm things go into a lot of to bring. Like that. I just want you to know that that does exist. Because sometimes when you go into the appraisal district and you're talking about your value, they'll say that's that's outside of our ratios and they can't do that. It's because they're going to be checked and audited by the uh, uh, comptroller. And I want you to understand that. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and pause, um, Jennifer. <laughs> okay, so the things to bring in. Um, so here's a list. Obviously, if you if you closed only bring the sales contract or your closing documents in if it helps you if it doesn't help you you don't have to give them the value you don't you don't put that value on a um if they send you a questionnaire and ask you how much you paid for the house um if it benefits you you know if it's like if you paid less than what they're saying the value is then sure go ahead and show it to them and bring it to them otherwise no don't it's you know you don't have to give them that information so don't um if um you know, if you've got the comps, you know, like I said, that I can provide to you, then um, then you can show those showing that it's less, um, you know, than your house. If you have any kind of, um, you know, um, inspection reports or um, invoices from, you know, different contractors saying that, you know, there's damage to your property. Now, if there was damage and you fixed it already, um, like, uh, well, hey, I had a, a a bad roof or whatever, you know, and, and, um, and I replaced it and it was $20,000. Well, that's great. But if you've already fixed it, then don't, don't provide that to them. Don't, don't give them that information because pretty much you're just telling them your value is actually more because you've improved your property now and you've already paid it. So it's only for things that are actually damaged. Um, and, you know, you just need to walk around and uh, walk around your house and look and, um, you know, see if you can, uh, find anything and it is as of January 1st so when we're doing the um, comparables we're we're giving you the value for 2021 so for last year because we're so we're April 2022 so we're looking at last year January 1st 2021 to the end of December 2021 so that on January 1st you know of the next year that's you know the value for that year um sometimes they might try to say well your value increased through the year um but you know it's um 
still something that you should um, argue on that, but you can't be pulling in, um, even if like the market, you know, went drastically down um, this month, which is not, but <laughs> if it did, uh, that would have no effect of, um, of your protest or your property taxes right now, because it's, um, it's for last year's value. Um, Okay, so uh, the CMA, I was still going to show you that. Um, I'll have that up while I'm showing the, let's see. Well, I was trying to show something more um, recent here. Let's see, for taxes. I do have some in here. I don't know why they're not um, showing up. Oh, craziness. It's crazy. Okay. I guess I'm going to show you from last year. Let's see if that's going up on your screen. Yes. Okay. So when you get the comparables, it will say, you know, obviously sold, the um, address, um, the date uh, that it closed, and uh, the price. So it'll also, I put the column in there for seller contributions. Um, so if for some reason the seller, you know, paid a large sum of money, this was $2,000, that means that the, the price is, 2000 less. So really this property here sold for, you know, 279. Not that big of a difference here, but if it was a lot more, it would be. So that would be something you could say, hey, you know, this house really didn't sell for that. It sold for this because the, the seller paid that. Um, but it's the, uh, when you're looking at it, the square feet. So you're wanting, you know, the same subdivision, similar in your belt, um, and then you're looking at the different um, square feet. So when I send it to somebody, I usually will circle um, the lowest um, price per square foot that it sold, and then also the lowest um, price. You know, so I'll highlight those for you, just saying that those would be my suggestions on um, you know which properties that that I would include. Now, when you do the protest, you might get information from the um, from the county and it's extremely overwhelming. Um, they, they'll send you tons and tons and tons of comps. So I, I would not, I mean, I usually just don't even look at it because it's just too much. And it's usually based on their opinion of value um, anyway. So um, I usually just show, show the comps. But so if you're in Collin County, then you go to the e-file um, protest, um, link that I showed you that was on the um, on the form that you got in the mail. So if, if you're not in Collin County, then just look at yours and follow whatever, um, wherever place it says for you to go. So um, I will have on my website a complete uh, walkthrough of it. I pretty much walk through the, the main um, things that you're going to say anyway. You know, you're going to go um, on my site, you're going to get the comps, um, I'm going to tell you which ones, you know, to pick, and then you're going to go through and say both, you know, it needs repaired and, you know, it's, it's value too high because, you know, um, I don't have that a bedroom. I have a, you know, study or I have whatever, you know, it is, um, and you're going to do your protest. But uh, if I did it with you right here live, I tried to figure out how to do a blur, but it doesn't let me blur out um, all my personal information. So um, I do have screenshots on the cheat sheet on my website from uh, last year. And, um, and I will put this year after I go through it and blur it out. So you would just say, you know, I'm gonna get to that point and then I'm not gonna go any further. <laughs> so that's where you would go. Okay, so again, go back to my website and it, um, I'll have all the walkthroughs there. Okay, I think that that is it. 
main thing, I'm going to try to show you where the, um, that's my property tax, so that's the protest. Main thing is that we need to be emailing, saying, do not raise the tax rate, lower it, please, needs to be lowered, and we all need to go vote for that Proposition 1 and 2. Um, did Jess put it on there? Obviously, I don't make it very clear, so um, I'll go through and make it a lot more clear <laughs> that this is where this is where you need to email. I'll put it right up at the top. Um, yeah, I must have just stuck it down at the bottom, but so I, I'll put it up at the top and replace that section that um, that I have about this webinar. Oh, there we go. Okay, there it is. Yep, I put it all the way down at the bottom. So um, I will put all this up at uh, the top, but here is that list of um, who we need to be complaining to. So, okay, I think that's it. I will stop sharing. Let's see. Well, most of you will probably be looking at this um, later on the replay. Um, so if you want to send me your questions um, um, after you, you know, go look at my website because it'll will, it will give you all the links and everything that we talked about today will um, we'll all be on there. And then um, if all of this is overwhelming, which it probably is, I usually give more information than, um, uh, than people uh, really want to read through. But if someone's looking for an answer like I was, um, then I put it here. So, uh, but if you want to just call me directly, um, or obviously if you're thinking about selling and you want to know the price of your um, house to, to sell and forget all these um, uh, protests and everything, then give me a call. My number is 214-682-5009. You can call or text. Um, and you can also send me an email and you can um, do that directly, you know, from my site. And you can also just schedule a time here uh, to um, have me call you. or We could do a Zoom um, meeting one-on-one -on -one and go over, you know, whether it's your, um, you know, protesting your taxes or uh, selling or buying a house. So anyway, I hope this ends up being helpful for everyone. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Signing off. Maybe signing off. I'm going to stop sharing first. Okay. You can tell that I don't um, use Zoom that often. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Bye.